and a big warm welcome to this week's Colors of India. We focus this week on the story of Draupadi. Go on to learn about origami and end as usual with the food trail. Media attention in the past couple of weeks have been dominated by one single unfortunate incident. Now in the field of art, this question of a woman's role in today's society is an often repeated one. Natya Ballet Centre through their production Draupadi, a dance drama that borrows heavily from Chao and Odissi, paid a tribute to the indomitable spirit of Draupadi, a character portrayed in the Mahabharata. Draupadi, in spite of being a princess, in spite of being a queen, having Lord Krishna as her sakha, as her friend, endured tremendous hardships. And uh, she was in a polyandrous marriage. And the Draupadis of today from Haryana and Punjab, because of female feticide, are being married off to three and five brothers. So we want to um, actually include a message in this performance just to bring awareness to this issue of female feticide, of women's empowerment, through this more traditional ballet. This dance drama explored the status of women in modern Indian context against the backdrop of the life of Draupadi, the Panchali princess. <coughs> This production began with a dramatic monologue by Shivani Vazir Pasrij. Her character, Ajki Nari, expressed in detail what it is like to be born a woman in present-day Indian society. <laughs> With the choreography, it was pretty good with uh, all the dancers doing all the, the whole choreography together and they were pretty, they did it all together so it was really nice. Um, but for me, I've seen, for Jopadi, I have seen other shows which have like Katha Kanwal but this is the first one for Arisi I've seen. So yeah, I thought it was pretty good. The story of Draupadi, who in spite of her beauty and intelligence was sacrificed at the altar of male ego in a game of dice, was portrayed by Nibedita Mahapatra. Choreographed by Anirudh Das and Mahapatra herself, the ballet, through its intermittent mixing of Odissi and Chao, expressed both the Lasya and the Tandava of Draupadi. पुरुष प्रधान युग में अपनी अस्मिता खोज रही हूँ, 
मुझ में छटपटाहट है आक्रोश है जीवन की व्यवस्था करने वाली अन्नपूर्णा मैं चाहती हूं मनुष्य के साथ मनुष्यता का व्यवहार हो I have to also point out that the production quality, the costumes, the use of props and sets in the show also work to its advantage. Now from that modern take on the epics, let's move to the time of the medieval era. Instituto Cervantes recently brought to Delhi a group of musicians from Catalan in Spain who keep the tradition of medieval religious music alive. Canto de la Sibila, which when translated means Songs of Sibyl, is a lyrical drama that was performed during Christmas in churches during the medieval era. This was declared a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO. Music is not only uh, music uh, to enjoy the, uh, the, the people. Uh, you know that for us it's also heritage. And uh, for Spanish people in Spain there are a lot of festivals uh, in which we can play uh, this kind of music for, uh, to show uh, for all uh, the listeners uh, about our heritage, uh, about uh, uh, our past and uh, all the important music we played in uh, in this kind of uh, of uh, this kind of music and this era. These songs are sung by a female prophetess or Sibyl. The singer greets the crucifix, turns around and begins the song which is sung a cappella and in a solo voice. Though the lyrics are mostly in Italian or medieval French, the spiritual qualities of the music made it easy to relate to. I couldn't understand the language of the music, but uh, it was there was a similarity between the Indian classical music and the Spanish music. A range of musical instruments lend their unique styles to the songs of Sibyl, from the medieval harp to flutes of different kinds the oud and the drums. The combination of soothing music, unrecognizable lyrics and distinct vocals created a spiritual aura that remained unbroken long after the last tune was sung. Music can definitely cut across language and cultural barriers. And on that very tuneful note, it's time for a small break. See you on the other side. Coming up, Folded Wonders. Followed by Food Trail at a popular cafe.
Welcome back. There's nothing quite like the joy of folding a plain piece of paper into magnificent and beautiful shapes. We take you to an origami exhibition which might remind you of your childhood. Bonding along with love and peace was the name given to the origami exhibition which celebrated 60 years of Indo-Japan international ties. Keeping in mind the theme, the Japan Foundation along with the origami oritai in India exhibited many forms of folded wonders. As a token of unity, they made a unique Sonobe unit which had the colors of the national flags of India and Japan. For me, it's like a meditation. So even if you're angry, if you're folding, then you feel calm down. And also that if you give items, see, they will be happy, and you will be happy, and everybody will be happy. So our aim is very high. That is world peace. So see, if you're a peaceful, peaceful person, then naturally you can spread the peace. That's what we, our club is doing, I think. Ori means folding and kami means paper. Origami is Japan's ancient art of paper folding. This art originated in the 17th century AD and gained recognition outside Japan by the late 1900s. Most of the items uh, we have used units which, express, which shows bonding. So basically our idea is to promote bonding between India and Japan. And otherwise our uh, theme is love and peace always. Because origami we feel it promotes love and peace. Because a person feels peaceful when he makes origami. And when he gives it to somebody and all when he makes uh, with the paper, it, uh, he's, uh, I mean, he shows his, it shows his love for the paper. When he gives it to somebody, it shows his love for that person. Origami itself has different styles. Oribana is a rare fusion of ikebana, the Japanese art of flower arrangement, and origami. Block origami features a large vase and figures of Japanese cartoons and flowers using colorful papers. A more complex form of origami involves creating difficult patterns such as masks, dragons, a cobra and a bonsai tree. If one starts folding the paper, then one forgets everything. No past, no future. Only the person would be in the present moment. Naturally, the anger, anger is about past. So they forget anger and they don't have any tensions. After two hours or three hours, then they realize, oh, so much of time I spent on origami. Normally. Just you can see the children who are doing this origami, they are quite peaceful. They are other, other side of the violence. In the tessellation style, a single paper is folded to give it a layered finish and pattern. Both children and adults take to this art form and the jungle scene created by them is testimony to this fact. It is fascinating to see a single dimensional piece of paper become a three dimensional object. Now language often gives a person the much needed identity and our next story is about this. India Habitat Centre's Language Fest, Samanvai, went by the theme Boli, Bani, Bhasha, Gaon, Kasba, Shahar. The festival in its second edition gave emphasis to preserving Indian languages and literature. Through discussions and performing arts, they brought in ideas and expressions from diverse cultural contexts. 
कभी उसमें अवधि आ गई कभी भोजपुरी आ गई The idea was to somehow or the other bring the the fascination of the Indian thought, Indian expression in different languages to them, and hoping that you know this fascination will actually evolve into a into a long-lasting love affair, you know, with the writings, with uh, the Indian authors, with the Indian poetry. So that is essentially the purpose, so that. Uh, the generations don't leave the heritage behind the overall theme and the overall intention of the festival is not to talk about the manners of speaking in everyday life it is about taking the focus back to writing in indian languages because i feel that there are more than a dozen festivals right now around in india and they are driven by the needs of the english language publishing and market so wherever you go you will find that there is a center stage for english authors and there is a center stage for english publishers so we are trying to bring some kind of balance to that national scenario because still these are the languages which people actually speak they cry in they laugh in these are the languages in which they actually feel themselves <laughs> Kathak Vachuso Shovna Narayan presented Ugnare a mythical episode from Mathili poet Vidyapati's life fondly known as the Mathili Kavi Kokil Vidyapati was a great devotee of Shiva and wrote extensively for his lord the piece was about Vidyapati's pure devotion which brought lord Shiva disguised as Ugna his servant to live in devotee's home ऐसा है मैं भक्ति देख अपना जिया जड़ाऊं करुण मधुर रचनाएं सुनकर मन की प्यास बुझाऊं करुण मधुर रचनाएं सुनकर मन की प्यास बुझाऊं करुण मधुर रचनाएं सुनकर मन की प्यास बुझाऊं when you're talking about bani and then you're talking about people and people together so that is what this whole festival is about that there is people and the language and their thinking everything is interconnected the subtle shift from one character to other combined with the artistry of shobhna narayan's performance left the audience awestruck performances the diverse languages in our country will definitely get its deserved space on this note it's time for another quick break don't go anywhere we'll be soon back coming right up is the story of pizzas and pastas welcome back Food trail this week is about a tiny little cafe in Mayur Vihar Phase Two, which is doing brisk business. They are all about happy eating. In less than three years, Scorpio Cafe has managed to make a name for itself in the tough business of food and taste. This tiny eating spot in Mayur Vihar Phase 2's DDA market has patrons who swear by its name. Uh, I live here only and uh, I came uh, I used to come here uh, almost every day. 
and the sandwiches and chowmin is very good now here and uh, that uh, veggie delight veggie delight is very good so uh, usually every youngster come here in the evening and have enjoy, enjoy the food here the cafe caters to popular demand and the menu includes both american and italian favorites the burger for instance is giant size and has wait for it a fat aloo tikki in the center Now this burger is absolutely fantastic. Look at how huge this is. It is in fact the biggest burger challenge I've ever faced. And I just absolutely love the filling. There's a little bit of there's little greens and then tomatoes and onions and mayonnaise. They also have an elaborate sandwich menu. The best amongst this is the spicy chicken one. I absolutely love it when my sandwiches are spicy. This one is super spicy. And for 50 rupees they give you four slices of sandwich which has loads and loads of chicken. Now that is a bargain. This is being run by my son Ayush Jaggi. He did his uh, uh, hotel management from New Zealand. He made up his mind that he should do something for the youngsters, and particularly in this locality, uh, this uh, continental food is not available, and people are nowadays fond of this kind of situation. He was also very particular that whatever should be uh, served to the client, it should be ready cooked. It should be cooked in front of the customer. They should have a look how it is being cooked. यहाँ पे जो है माहौल बहुत अच्छा है ओपन है सब कुछ जनरली सब दोस्त वगैरह सब लोग हम लोग यहाँ आते हैं बैठते हैं साथ में खाते हैं सब कुछ अच्छा लगता है और यहाँ पे खाने पीने की हर चीज़ अच्छी जो है रेट वगैरह सब कुछ नॉर्मल है और सबसे अच्छा यहाँ माहौल बहुत अच्छा है और घर के पास भी है तो ईजी रहता है यहाँ और सब कुछ अच्छा मिल ही जाता है Everything in this cafe is made to order and standing at the counter one can watch all the frenzied activity in their spotless kitchen Popular Italian items like the pizzas and the pastas are also served here Personally I've always been partial to pasta which is made in white sauce but here at Sop Scorpio Cafe I would definitely advise you to try this one because I like it a little more better than the tomato one also it is so rich so rich that I would advise that you actually share it with somebody mm, the portions are huge crust italian pizzas served with a topping of jalapenos olives broccoli cheese and tomatoes are a dream to watch and to eat and all this at a very nominal cost Scorpio Cafe might come across as just another neighborhood cafe but there's more to this place than what meets the eye for one the food is served really elegantly the variety is huge and it's neat clean and of course you receive such warm service it is indeed happy eating that's all we have this week on our episode of colors of india keep watching until next week goodbye and take care also do remember to send your suggestions and feedbacks to our facebook page see you next week